guys, it's me, Maxi Rainbow. And I'm Renata from the eSpot. And we are super duper excited to be announcing our new project together, the Joint Slay Podcast. Yeah. Ah. Now, I have wanted to do a podcast for so long, like for years. I've been on the hunt for a co-host. And me and Renata have been friends for like... I, yeah, a couple years now. Yeah. Wait, well, no, do you know what? We met last summer for the first time. Was it last summer? We met last summer. I was living in Pittsburgh, which is where we happen to be right now. Um, we met last summer. I was living here. It would have been in the springtime or oh. summertime, maybe around mm. like March. And I came into your job, and that was the first <laughs> time we met, like IRL. Like, yeah. we had never been in the same room together, but I think we had been friends on the internet yeah, for at least given, a year, mm -hmm. probably before then. I would have never given a stranger my job, mm -hmm. my no, job location. You can never do something so, like that. So yeah, for sure. And then we only met that one time, mm -hmm. and then you moved, you left me. Yeah, I lived here for like six months, and we met the one time, <laughs> um, because that's just how life is sometimes. Yeah. And then I moved out, and then we linked up again in Liverpool for Eurovision this year, and it was just like, yeah, Magic. like pure chemistry because we really know ne we never talked on the phone or anything mm -hmm. even before that It was just that one interaction then like interactions on the internet. Yeah, and I don't know we just We really just connected in a way that I I didn't expect and I'm, I'm very happy that we did that and and we stayed together for that period of time because like I don't know I don't really have a lot of friends in the Eurovision community that I really feel like close to I well, have peers but and obviously we live in the United States yeah so like that's a problem too like it's easier mm -hmm. to have Eurovision friends when you live in Europe yeah. um, we have so many Eurovision friends from Europe now that we've met them um, but it's so much harder here in the US like our country is so big so it's amazing yeah. to have like another like person who also like understands like what it's like to be an American Euro fan. Yes, yes. And also like, so when we met, I don't believe you were doing YouTube at that point, right? Because you started this season. I right. did. I started this season. I had started the podcast with Greg, the eSpot podcast, um, in 2021. Mm -hmm. And um, I started doing YouTube this season. But actually, what's kind of funny is I had never really watched reaction videos. Mm -hmm. I really only watched your reaction videos <laughs> and the Honest Vocal Coach. Oh, queen, and, queen. I, I know, love her. Amazing. I love her. And Eurovision Tom. I yeah. never really got super into reaction videos, mm -hmm. but now that I do them myself, I watch everybody's reaction yeah. videos after Ooh. I film one I'm like because I'll, I'll like bottle it up like before mm -hmm. I film one and then afterwards I have to watch everyone else yeah. put one out because I just want to know what everyone thinks which I think is like the magic of reactions yeah. right that you get to kind of relive watching something the first time yes. with a yes. friend exactly yeah now it's different for me because ever since I started doing reactions like the way I found Eurovision was like through people doing reactions, Alyssia Michelle and Wee Wee Blogs. Those were like my top two favorites. And there wasn't a lot of people doing reactions though when I started. Um, and now that I do reactions, I don't feel like I watch anybody but Honest Vocal Coach. Cause she's and yeah, she's I, the I started watching yours when they when you started doing them. But I mean, for the last few years, like I really here and there maybe, but like. You know, I, I, it's weird. I like, I, I want to just have my thoughts in my head. Oh, interesting. You know, because I feel like I get kind of like skewed when I start to hear other people's opinions. And I really just like, I want to stay within my own mind. Oh, that's so interesting. Oh, when did but, you start doing the reactions? Because you've been doing them a while, right? Yeah, so I believe I would have started in 2018, I'm thinking, because that's whenever I was working in a salon for a little bit. And they were like super, like horribly abusive to me. And I was like, I quit. I'm done. I'm not going in any salon. I'm uh. done. And then I, I started doing YouTube while I was unemployed that year. And it was with Junior Eurovision 2018, I believe. I think it's 2018 when Roxana won because that was my first ever year or like contest that I followed. Okay. So I started with Junior Eurovision. And then from there, I just did reactions. And then I was, I've been doing it ever since. And I was supposed to go to the contest in 2020, but then it got canceled and stuff. So that kind of delayed my progress with like actually going to the contest and doing that. Um, but yeah, oh my God, how long ago? 2018, how many years is that? 
It's 2023. So that's years. like five years. Oh my God. Wow, that's a really long time. Ooh. It's funny because yeah. our trajectories are kind of like opposite of each yeah. other with your event. So we grew up like in in U.S. terms, two hours away from each other yeah. in the same state. Um, but it's a really big state. But like my family's from Pittsburgh. But we're like, yeah. as far as concerned, we're from the same place. Yeah. Um, but I started watching Eurovision as like a local. Mm -hmm. um in 2004 that was the first eurovision at least that i remember yeah. watching i was in a hotel room in poland mm -hmm. and i was just like channel surfing there's like five channels and i land on like this you know this show with all this music and i loved music and it was and all the phone numbers on the screen i'm like what the hell is this like i didn't know what it was yeah. but i knew that i loved it mm -hmm. and because i always went to poland in may with my family it was like every year this weird tv show would be on and every year it's like oh that weird show yeah. is on again that's so funny it's almost like it's on every time we're here in may what's up with yeah. that and then as time went on i think 2016 mm -hmm. I had kind of linked up again with my friend Greg, who's mm -hmm. the other part of the eSpot, who I actually knew from when I lived in Poland, when I was in school, like two, 2000, like probably 2007. So we've been friends for a really long yeah. time. Um, and he was really into national selections, mm -hmm. Melfest mm -hmm. specifically, because yeah. his mom lived in Sweden. And mm -hmm. so he was like, felt very connected to Sweden. And that was when I started like getting into the contest as a fan mm -hmm. and not like a local who watched it on yeah, TV. Yeah, just a TV show that you see every year. Yeah. Actually like following it. Starting to follow it. And then once I started following it, I was like, I was super into it, but I never got I didn't even know that there was like a YouTube world. Yeah. Actually, like I didn't know that there were as a fandom. Yeah. Essentially, you mm -hmm. know, and I didn't know like where to even go for it. It was just like I watched it with Greg and for years I watched it and then realized like, oh, like there's people on Twitter that are just talking about this all the time. Yeah. Like I can do that. Um, but yeah. you, so I never watched Junior Eurovision until this year. So yeah. you like kind of started on Junior Eurovision mm -hmm. and you're super into Junior and I N never really watched it although yeah. i'll admit i i do think it's great from what i've seen i watched it this mm -hmm. year it, i mean i i love junior eurovision i'm a junior eurovision stan um for me like when i first started it was like it was the opposite because i you lived in poland and so you had that kind of connection but for me i mean i've never left america until i learned about eurovision so i learned about it and immediately whenever i i learned I like went all in and I became like a super crazy obsessed fan. So how I learned about Eurovision was I was just like obsessed with Bjork. It was Bjork. Really? Yeah. Is she connected to Eurovision? No. But what happened that. was um, suddenly I started getting all these European artists because I started getting oh. really into like Scandinavian music and um, just artists that were from like Sweden or wherever. And then all of a sudden, you know, I was just clicking on recommended songs and listening to them and finding new artists. And Lena Meyer Landret, Satellite, I just was obsessed with the song. And I didn't know anything about your vision. I just love the song. And then I was like, I want to hear more of her music. I really like her sound. Let me click on the channel. But it wasn't her channel, it was the Eurovision channel. And it was in 2016, all the songs had just like been released. I wanna say it was probably around like April. Um, and by the time the contest rolled around, I listened to all the artists, became obsessed with Jamala, like obsessed. Cause she's the queen. Yeah. And so you can imagine my like emotional reaction, which is on YouTube, which is fun. Cause from the start of me learning about Eurovision, I documented like my reactions yeah. from the beginning and like it was just such an emotional reaction like you know when you're fave and you have such a connection to them wins mm -hmm. you're hooked yeah. and so then from there because when I learned about it it was after all the songs had already been released from there uh the next year the following year like junior Eurovision happened I learned about that I, I was obsessed with Destiny Chukuniere um she's, a, she's amazing an icon a legend and that was the last that was like the previous junior Eurovision that you know, it was 2015. Mm -hmm. So in 2016, when I learned about it, that was the one that I was watching. And so I just became obsessed. Like it just, as time went on, I went back, I was listening to all the old entries. I was ranking them. I just like <laughs> went full force into the fandom. It was like insane, right from the jump. That's another difference between you and I, because yeah. I don't, 
like do prior years i know that's controversial to not go back and like watch 1986 and do a full ranking but that's just not mm -hmm. like I, like i don't even really rank like current years like yeah. i just have the songs that i i like and like mm -hmm. if they make the playlist then yeah. that's it maybe i'll pick like a top three when it comes mm -hmm. to like supporting and voting yeah. um but like i don't go back and i don't do ranking so it's funny because like we it, and it's a huge part of the fandom but it's mm -hmm. just one thing that like i just don't do but i love watching other people's yeah. rankings like i love watching juries i mm -hmm. do run a few juries i yeah. like running juries um but i'm not like a ranker I'm That's not like crazy. a super ranker. See, I'm the person that's ranking everything, <laughs> every national selection. Like, if I listen to all the songs, I need to rank them. And the fun thing is being able to go back and, like, seeing the way that your views have changed. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I'll, I'll go back. When I go back to 2016, I'm like, girl, why did I have Sing It Away? No offense. I know you love Finland, but why did I have Sing It Away as, like, my number two? What? It's funny how your taste changed. See, I guess that is one aspect of ranking that... Yeah. You know, I guess I do miss out on as I don't mm -hmm. necessarily have like that. Like I can't see necessarily how my taste changed. I just yeah. know that maybe it did, or maybe I don't even know yeah. that it did. Yeah. But I wonder, do you go back and rewatch your reactions? No, really? I don't. No. no, not really. I, I really, my reactions, I don't like to rewatch. I don't know why it makes me uncomfortable. I love watching like when I would do like lip syncs and stuff to them. I'll watch a lip sync of myself like over and over and over and over again. But I don't want to hear myself talk. It's hard enough to edit videos, honestly, yeah. for me. Um, but there's been times where like the YouTube algorithm will throw me my own video yeah. and I get like a jump scare because oh all God. of a sudden I hear mm -hmm. my own voice coming through the TV like, oh no. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's like, I think what it is for me is when I'm editing it, I don't have a problem. But something about hearing myself weeks later, <laughs> I don't know, I'm like, oh God, what was going through your head Why did that I moment? say that? Yeah, like yeah. that was not even funny. Like, why would you even say that? That joke did not land or whatever. And then sometimes I'm just like, oh my God, my voice is annoying. Like, <laughs> I know, I feel the same way. So like, I'm so thankful that for all of you who actually enjoy watching us because like I know yeah <laughs> it's so nice to know that uh, other people don't feel as awkward as we do yeah when we see ourselves yeah because sometimes I listen to people and I'm like ooh, like I love ASMR mm. and you know those people have like the nicest voices ever and I'm like I do not have that voice <laughs> but maybe that's how some people see me you know yeah. like maybe it's just because it's in my head right but maybe i just have an annoying voice maybe that's it i don't know i don't know i don't think so i love watching your videos like i said yeah. one time i put on max's video and my dog started <laughs> barking like oh crazy God. like looking right at the tv barking like crazy and i'm like cookie like that is i know maxi rainbow show some respect to the queen <laughs> to the eurovision queen to the eurovision queen you know i don't know dogs hate me <laughs> dogs hate me I don't know what it is. They just despise me. So I don't blame your dog for that. Honestly. It's okay. Honestly, if you came into the apartment, she would bark at you too because she's absolutely wild and crazy <laughs> and barks. It's Cookie. She it's, she makes an appearance in every single one of my mm -hmm. videos. Like if Cookie was here, she'd be popping oh God, her yeah. head out through the yeah. thing just like she does with my backdrop every single time. So I think we should talk a little bit about how we're going to do this podcast, the format and everything like that. So our plan is every single Friday there's going to be a new episode posted here on my YouTube channel and it's going to have about approximately about 20 minute preview of the video mm -hmm. on YouTube. You're going to get the full episode though, okay? Don't worry. This episode you're getting the full Monty for this episode. Yes, and you'll have the audio after the 20 minutes mm -hmm. are up. But if you would like to watch our beautiful faces every single week and also support our new venture, our podcast, as well as, you know, our trips to Eurovision mm -hmm. and, and, and everything, all it takes to, you know, get up here and do these videos for you guys, we are going to be launching a Patreon, which I'm very excited about. So it's going to be a joint sleigh mm -hmm. Patreon. And there's going to be two tiers that you guys can subscribe to. The first one is going to be the just the tip tier. Now, you know, it's just as it sounds. You will be uh, tipping us if you're a supporter, you know, just it's just a way to yeah. show us that like you appreciate the show and exactly. i mean every dollar counts and it helps us 
keep on doing these videos. Exactly. Yeah. So what that'll be is any donation from one dollar to uh, four, basically, is going to be the just the tip mm -hmm. section. And then at five dollars, you will get the full length video. Early release. Early relate. <laughs> Early release. Early release of the full length video of the podcast, as well as the audio on there as well early. Um, so I'm very excited. We also do have plans in the future to do some extra little okay. things for you guys, but those will come at a later date. We got to make sure we, you know, we get our footing mm -hmm. and everything like that with the podcast, but I'm super duper excited, except especially when the season starts up. I'm so excited. Right. Because there's going to be so much to talk about. It's going to be like current events, everything like that. But the thing is, we want to have fun. Yes. It's not, we're, we're not over here giving you the news. Okay. There's plenty of people that are going to be reporting on Eurovision. News. That are like yeah. actual. And they do a really good job exactly. of that. And exactly. And other people do analysis and mm -hmm. they do great analysis. We want to have fun. Yeah. And we want to just speak our minds in a really free form way. Exactly. Because like, we kind of realized like we would get on the phone and talk to mm -hmm. each other. Even in Liverpool, we would get yeah. home from the club at like three in the morning, oh stay up till six in the morning just, just talking. talking. Yeah. About our day and just about Eurovision and in everything and other stuff exactly too. just life and so that's what we want this to be it's going to be Eurovision related mm -hmm. every single week however you know we're gonna be talking about our lives it's gonna be like two besties yes just chatting with all of is. our other friends exactly which is with our guys. besties exactly exactly so I'm I'm so excited for what there is to come from this you know it's just I, I, I this is something I've been wanting to do for so long long i love doing reactions but i want to be able to sit down do long form you know talking about the contest in detail and arguing and arguing because we will argue yes, you will get to watch will. us fight we're gonna be like we at each other's throats guaranteed exactly. and i'm not afraid to cut <gasps> you with my nails with or with my crown <laughs> i literally had the crown fall off my head i've got like with a your sister's cut crown. my it's Actually, literally, <laughs> literally my sister's crown. She let me borrow it for this. <laughs> All right. So for this next segment of the podcast, we are going to do the Eurovision 2023 awards show. And we're going to give you our favorite picks for different categories for this year's Eurovision songs. And now this segment is going to be an example of the type of content that you would see on our Patreon channel. So in future episodes, this would kind of be where the episode ended and we told you come to our Patreon and support us to see the rest of the video. But because this is our first episode, we're going to give it to you for free. So let's jump in with the Eurovision 2023 Joint Slay Awards. Yes. Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> Hi <-day. laughs> So the first one, we're going to start the same way we would in a regular season, which is with the national finals. So Maxi Rainbow, mm -hmm. what do you think was this year's best national selection? Period. The selection itself? Mm -hmm. mm, you know, I got to say, UMK. UMK was... A cut above the rest. Every song, amazing. Even the songs I didn't like, yes. I could have seen winning. Yes, there wasn't a bad song in mm -hmm. the contest. And it wasn't even just the quality of the songs that made that contest above and beyond every other one this year. Mm -hmm. It was the way that the network handled the contest yeah. and handled the release of the songs because we have so many different formats of releasing songs you don't hear the song until the night of the show or the song comes out because they've all been you know previously released ahead of time mm -hmm. or you get a weird demo of the song or a vocal audition of the song but with yeah. umk they know what they're doing they give us 
a song a week to premiere them. So you have enough space to be excited, mm -hmm. but you have a full package video also. Yes. It's equitable. That's it. That's it. Because it also yes. gives everybody a fair shot. Fair footing. You know, it's not that you, you know those selections where you can see that person got all the money, they get a music video, they get this mm -hmm. whole rollout, and then you got the other people that are independent and they're trying to do it themselves and they got, they don't even, get, they just got the demo out mm -hmm. there. They don't even have the full song yeah. out. And that was like level playing field, unique, diverse mm -hmm. artists. I love that a lot of them, I mean, they have big names and they're big finish names, but then they also have people who it's like their first song ever. And, yes. they're, and they still get the chance to dominate the charts. I mean, literally in UMK this year, there was uh, Kiera yeah. with Business on the Dance mm. Floor, and that was her debut single. And she, she's like 18, like she's yeah. young. She was a young buck and she went up there and she scored higher than Robin, Robin. Pakalan and Benjamin Felton. Yeah, yeah. It just absolutely, honestly, kind of mopped the floor with them. She but did. they were good songs and good performances that yes. came last in that contest. So like yeah. if your last place in a national selection would come top 10 in Eurovision, like you're doing something yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree a hundred percent. I was like thinking, I don't know. I, like there were some honorable mentions to me in my brain where I was like, you know, Spain was really, Spain's, really yes, good. Yes, Benidorm Fest is on the right track. Yes. You know, UMK has been going on as a format for a mm -hmm. while now. I think Benidorm, if it continues on the yes. track it's on, it will be another one like UMK where it's a must watch. Kind of what Melfest used to be. Used to be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Getting into some controversy Ooh, here. But but it's the truth. But it's the truth. It's the truth. We'll always give you the truth. So on our first question, our first award, we're in agreement. In agreement. That is not going to be the case as yes. we continue. No. <laughs> <laughs> All righties. I can't read those. Oh, that's right. You're blind. Okay. Um. It's okay. I have the proctor <laughs> of the awards. We'll cut that part out about your site. <laughs> Okay, so next award is for the favorite national final entry. So this can mm. be any song from the national finals. If there's one that you love, yes. whether it went to Eurovision or whether it got disqualified, whatever. Mm -hmm. What would you say is yours? My favorite entry. Dramatic pause. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm trying. I'm, run, I'm running th it through my brain. I right know now. it's a hard. It's this is actually a really hard question. Oh, let's narrow it down. This is no. going to be national final entry that did not go. That to Eurovision. didn't go to Eurovision, and it's your favorite. It. it, it okay. It's the favorite. It's the one that yes. you like. M Mi familia. Excellent. Because and and the reason why I say this for this category is because, okay, the live performance sucked. That poor girl could not sing at she all, was out of and I got to see her live. She can't sing live. I, 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 I but love, you know what? Not everybody the can. No. It, there's a lot that goes into performing exactly. live. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, the studio track. Amazing. Is amazing. Yeah. You know, so that is still like right now. Honestly, out of all the entries that didn't go to Eurovision, all the national selection songs that didn't go to Eurovision, that's my most listened to. And I really feel like if it had a good live performance behind it, it could have been top 10 in Eurovision because even the concept the chosen family Paris mm -hmm. is burning the the whole stage show honestly like the burning car I don't know if it was burning but it could have been burning yeah you know that idea is so good and it, it, the song the song is, is so great. unique oh that song is amazing yeah I agree that was a really good one and that did go right onto my playlist and it yeah. it has stayed there um so for me, this maybe is controversial, and I'm not saying this to be edgy either, mm -hmm. but Booty by Elena from yeah. Poland. Yeah. Um, that song just like, it's one of those songs where I like listen to it on repeat mm -hmm. to the point that it was like, I would go a whole day and not listen to another yeah. song. I would just be like driving to work yes. just over with booty, 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 mm, booty, so, so fast. fast. And you know what? I'm gonna say I'm still pissed the fuck off that Every single night in the clubs in Liverpool, I didn't hear that song one single bloody time. It's ridiculous. Unbelievable. Shame on every single DJ that did not exactly. play Booty by Elena. I am just. I heard solo so many times. No, oh God. I was about I to leave the Wee Wee Jam after how many times I had to listen to that goddamn song. Yeah. But Booty by Elena is so good. I just. Yes, another thing where the performance was just. Like, it didn't work. Yeah, but um, the song. The song itself. The I, lyricism. The lyrics are great. 
She speaks to my soul. She's she really speaks to my soul. Yeah. Like I just I love that song. It really gets me going. That has to be my favorite national final entry that did yeah. not make it. But there were so many amazing ones this year. Like it's really hard to pick a favorite. Yeah. It really is. I mean, because I was going through the list and every single selection I was going through each one and I was like, "Oh my god, I could pick 5 from each." My national final selection like playlist is always unbelievably yeah. huge yeah more songs than even go to eurovision at the end of it like i oh yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent half the time i prefer the national selection songs over that's why i watch national selections because if i don't i would miss out on so many good songs like if exactly. i didn't have booty by elena in my life what would i have listened to for like those two months on a loop Nothing. um okay so this next award is not necessarily about how much you necessarily love the song. Mm -hmm. But this is the most robbed national selection entry. So the song that you think was that was really so good that it deserved to go to Eurovision the most. Yeah. I think I know. Mm -hmm. And I I don't I I hate to say this because I do love Peak Jacks. But for me, love the them. song I believe it's pronounced Fiore su Marte, I believe, something like that. Fiore su Marte, no, no, sai. Oh, that song, to me, every time it comes on, I think it's a San Remo song. Wow. It's like so good. The production is amazing, the harmonies, like, I think they could have, they would have qualified in Eurovision, and I think they could have really done well for San Marino. And I love Peak Jacks. I love Don't them. get it twisted. We'll talk in a future episode. Of, uh, we'll go into more depth about certain things that happened this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I mean, you know, I wish they came with a, a stronger song. Um, I'm glad they went to Eurovision. I'll say that. Yeah. I'm very glad they went to Eurovision because I'm so glad that I got to meet them. Yes. And I'll say, too, like, my opinion when it comes to, like, things being robbed, it's not necessarily anything about the person yeah. who won instead. I believe any person who goes on stage and competes deserves to win regardless because exactly. they actually did the thing. Yeah. Like, I can't do that. Anyone who can do that, like, they would deserve it if they got it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there, there is that feeling that, like, yeah. I, you know, another thing would have would have been a, an amazing yeah. choice, too, and yeah. deserved it. Because did they get last? Much. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, I don't think they would have came last, personally. But that's okay. That's yeah. a, that's a good point. That's a yeah. good point. And who was your favorite? So my most or your most robbed. My most robbed, I think, is actually going to be "So Low" by Ruta Murr from <gasps> Lithuania. Oh yeah. And the reason that that's I'm saying most robbed is I I think that it could have done just as well as Monica Linky Day's Chudo Tudo mm -hmm. stay. Mm -hmm. But the circumstances under which Ruta Murr lost was a robbery because that was a case where they did one of those weird, oh, the 12 yeah. points, jury 12 points, and then they combine them. So if you don't get enough of the one, then you, you, like, you can't win. Did they tie? They did a tiebreaker for the jury. And yeah, and it should go to the televote. It should go to the televote because more people are voting in the yeah. televote. So when you do the tiebreak towards the jury, you're favoring 10, 12 people's opinion. Yeah. And Monica yeah. Lou was on that jury, and she's friends with Monica Linkite. Like, I think they maybe wrote so uh, songs together. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that they were close. Yeah. So it was just one of those things where Ruta Murr's song was very original. Yes. And... It just it would have been memorable it would have been memorable the stage show was awesome and that one really deserved to go to eurovision and the circumstances under which it yeah, did I not totally make it forgot about that happening. that was a robbery for me that was the mm. biggest robbery you give me so and i had a look planned i was i had it in my shopping cart ready i had buy. the the uh white cowboy yes. hat with a dang we probably had the same damn thing in the, our cart. literally yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Exactly. Okay, so next award is favorite official music video. Mm. Now, I know 100%. When I hear this, it's My Sister's Crown. Because to me, first of all, 
the message of the music video. That's like what I'm looking for is, okay, we got, you know, cute music videos shot in a nice studio, but does it have something more than that? First of all, they had hella sets. They were filmed in all these different locations. True. It was artistic. It was so good that it made people forget about their horrific live performance in their national selection and still vote for them. Yes. And and it had people talking all the way till the contest began. Oh my god, like why why aren't you guys dressed in the way that of your music video and all these things? Like the that that music video lived rent free in people's brains the whole season. And like that was one of those things where like I don't know. There's very few moments where when I hear a Eurovision song for the first time and I see that visual I'm just like at a loss for words it just like blows me away and um even like you know the controversy that came through it like because there was messaging it was like more than just a cute song it was mm -hmm. like trying to deliver something more and anytime you put symbolism in yes anybody can come up with what they think that symbol means to exactly. them it's, that's what art is yeah is when you find your own interpretations yeah. which i do think it was a good piece of art in that way because it did have people talking like mm. doing actual critique of their music video yeah. instead of just like oh it's a cool video like yeah. it looks cool so that's that's definitely my favorite music video what about you you know, this one is really difficult mm -hmm. um, because I think there were a lot of good music videos this year. Cha 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 had a really good music video yeah. that was like very minimalist and really captured mm -hmm. like the energy of the song very well yeah. and it was very funny. Um, but there were other really good music videos. I think Mama Shcha had a yes! great I video. I agree a hundred percent. I think yes. that video was amazing. And that was another one that had a lot of symbolism in mm -hmm. it. Like they had the the word for like hunger and yeah. I think plague and some other things like on there was there was so much going on there. It was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I loved the way that it also mirrored the live performance as mm -hmm. well. You could tell they had a very clear concept and they wrapped yeah. the song and the meaning and the visuals and the humor and the yes. stage concept and the costumes like mm -hmm. it was such a good package yeah. to me that yeah. i think that one could be the best music video of good, the year yeah. for me that's a good one that is mm -hmm. that was definitely on my like short list yeah of options also, shout out to Mae Muller, because I think that she had a great one, too. Okay, I have to say something about the Mae Muller video. That is a, like, straight-up fetish music video. <laughs> that That is, it's a giant Tess video. Mm. This is, like, a thing. Tess? Giant Tess, like a giant. Oh! Oh, that, Because she's a yeah. giant. Oh, she, like, is crushing the car. Mm. I think she picks up the guy and eats mm -hmm. him. She does the giantess vor. Like, I was watching <laughs> that thing. I'm like, hello, <laughs> am I the only person in this room who is, oh. like... This is a giantess that. video. Like, I hope that video went all over the forums. I hope the giantess guys found that yeah, because that she made some money from that. For real, that is what it is, and I'm not knocking it. I loved it. That was another. That's another like short list yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, that was a great one. Like with all of these categories, it's so hard to choose because yeah, there are a lot there of are really so many great good ones. Options. Okay, so the next couple awards are going to kind of be like dual part awards mm -hmm. and they're kind of like opposite of each other so the first one will be the best staging for television and the worst staging for television so what's mm. your best staging for television the best staging for television was tattoo yes it was tattoo that one although did not come alive really in the in the arena i feel like mm -hmm. I, I i didn't connect to it at all it was just it was you weird. couldn't see her at all i mean it was really and it was so far away but on it couldn't TV, have been more static no yeah 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 from afar i mean you don't notice those little movements you don't notice her change in emotion mm -hmm. all of that is not translated from afar but on tv I mean, that was a four TV performance and it, it was, was it was magical. It created a, an environment. It really like transported you to this other world. And it was like nothing we've seen at Eurovision before. So mm -hmm. that was, in my opinion, the best on TV performance for me, staging. Yeah, I think it was one of the best. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it was the best mm -hmm. only because we saw the way that it looked in Melfest. 
Yeah. And it was much better. It was more dynamic. The box was larger. So when she swiped her hand. Yeah. So it was a downgraded version That's of what fair. would have been the best. Mm -hmm. So my best for television is actually my worst for live. Ooh. Yes. So this is going to be our segue award. So the, <laughs> for me, I'm going to give the best staging for television and the worst staging for live to Brunette. <gasps> oh, no! Yes. So I thought Brunette staging looked so... She's gagged. I thought Brunette staging looked amazing on TV. Mm -hmm. I thought it just... You felt really isolated with her. You could kind of like feel her pain. Mm -hmm. you, you, she's on that thing and the things are swirling around and you can tell she's like, woo! <laughs> You can Bitch, tell <laughs> the ghost of brunette snatched oh her crown. Oh my god, she did. I'm sorry, that has nothing to do with brunette. She's fabulous, but I just I thought I thought on TV it looked incredible. Yeah. It just really I thought it matched the song really well. I thought it really worked. I thought it was beautiful. Mm. But in the arena, man, it was like really? it same thing with tattoo. I just couldn't connect to it. I was maybe a little bit farther away in that one too. So all I saw was this white square. See, the reason why this gagged me so hard was because I was going to say it was the best one live. <laughs> Because that was the one that I remember being like, oh my god, I have chills. But wow. I was right up in the front, in the, in the standing area. And so I did feel like I was there with her and I was mm. feeling every little, mm. little intimate moment with her. Um, so for me, like being so closer, that was, I mean, I remember having chills and, and that wow. was when, because I did not love that entry. And that was the moment I started loving it. That's so funny. So it really did depend where you were in the yeah. arena because like I said, I felt really connected to her through the, like mm -hmm. I felt very intimate in the television, but I felt very isolated yeah. Yeah. in the arena. That is so and funny. And see, hers was out on that little area uh, in yeah, the front, the circle. whereas Laureen's was all the way in the back of the stage. Yes. So even though I was like closer up, I mean, I couldn't see shit for Laureen, but for, yeah. for Burnett, I was right there. So, oh, that's yeah, so interesting. that's so funny. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh so then gosh. I guess who would be, that would be then, uh, my best staging for live mm -hmm. would be My Sister's Crown. Yeah. I thought Vesna's staging in the arena blew my mind. I was yeah. also on the kind of side, mm -hmm. like right next to the thing where they walked out. So my view of it was also really good. Mm. But I felt like... And I'll say that was one of my least favorite songs this year. Yeah. I did not love it. Uh, I, and I, even I'm not talking about the song here. I'm talking about like how it looked in the yeah. arena. I was like same thing like chills. Yeah, I was it was just so beautiful. All that pink. It just felt so warm mm -hmm. and like I was enveloped in it. And the way that the choreography, it was like so balanced yeah. and it was graceful. And it felt like watching like literally a ballet. Yeah, it was choreographed so well. And I had no idea they could dance like that. It was no amazing. idea. It was like a gag. I was gagged, yeah. especially because I talked so much shit on that entry leading up to it, and everyone yeah. was like, "You're gonna eat your words, blah blah blah." And it's like, no, they really, yeah. they did such a good job on that one mm -hmm. live. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. I mean, that one was so good as well. I said my favorite was, or yeah, my favorite was mm -hmm. brunette. My least favorite live, and on television, I think it might be the same. I think it might be Theodore Andre. And oh. I hate to say that because you guys know yeah. I'm a stan. We love and, Theodore. I mean, y'all saw my top ten. Like, he was in my top ten. Love him. I love him. Love the song. Love the song. Oh, my God, love the love song. Love the song. It just... It, it, it I left think, so much to be desired. Uh, and, and you know what? Fuck TVR. Fuck TVR. Fuck TVR. Because Honestly, worst uh, possible outcome yeah. and treatment that they could have given to a young art or yeah. any artist but yeah. specifically a young artist who really deserved mm -hmm. support and a fair shot yeah yeah and Shame somebody that them. and that has so much talent so much of a vision as well like he has so many ideas in his head and it's like wasted like you guys wasted this brilliant artist that he you have he does have a vision and yeah. that's that sometimes maybe he has too many ideas mm -hmm. but he has ideas and he has yeah. good ideas and what they gave him they should have supported those ideas yes. and figured out the best way to bring it along instead of just making him basically 
do it on his own. And I'm sure we'll go more into that drama and how that yeah. all played out in a future episode. But and maybe we'll get Theodore on and maybe, this podca oh, podcast. I, we love Theodore. We need to Theodore, get that photo. Get here, please. <laughs> yes, yes, come to Pittsburgh. Come to, come to Pittsburgh. <laughs> come, come on joint sleigh. We'll come to Romania. Yeah, I would happily come we'll to Go Romania. hang out with him and Andrew oh Tate. Oh my God. Um, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, no, he's in prison with the rest of TVR. Mm, anyway. It should be. Ooh. Oh boy, we're both having wardrobe malfunctions. I know, right? Jeez, oh man. My sister's crown is really coming <laughs> to haunt us. TVR's ghost has yes, I know. snatched away. <laughs> <Who's that>? <laughs> Okay, our next award is going to be for Best Female Vocalist. So this could be either live or in general. Mm -hmm. Who do you think stood out as the best female? For me, it's Mimi Cat. Mm, excellent choice. I just feel like her range is out of this world. And she's one of those people, never sounded bad. Ever. Absolutely. I mean, she was sitting there out on the terrace in Spain with me, singing her heart out. She sounded great at 9 a.m. <laughs> and then like at every single live show, at every single pre-party, at every single, like everything, she sounded amazing. Her song is not easy to sing mm -mm. and she just killed it every single time. And she's dancing and all that. And she's serving emotion the whole time through, through all that flawless vocals. So for me, it's Mimi Cat. I was actually also going to say Mimi Cat. Ugh. Because the, the, Laureen, a very close second, yeah. um, and for the same reason, I think both of those two, Laureen and Mimi Cat, mm -hmm. are very professional. Yes, that's the thing. They're incredibly professional. You can tell every time they sing that they work so hard. Like, it truly mm -hmm. is their job yes. to sing and to nail it, yeah. actually, every single time yeah. that they sing. Um, another one that I would say, though, like as an honorable mention, would be Alika. Yeah. I never witnessed her sing poorly. Yes, that's very true. She and I, never had an off night. Mm -hmm. And I will say with her song, I feel like her song was kind of carried by her in amazing vocal ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think that that's also something to be said. It like, wouldn't wouldn't matter what her song yes, was. Yeah. She would have oh, done well because she was a great singer. Exactly, exactly. And also, you know who I want to give a shout out to who gagged me? Who? Was Iceland. Delio! Delio! She was good! At the Nordic party? She was She good. gagged me there. She gagged me there. I just remember being like, whoa. I mean, she's one of those like, almost like Christina Aguilera E vibes where yeah. she's like, <laughs> and, but uh, you know what? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it really works to just like, be like, whoa, okay, girl, you, you can, sing it. Yeah, you can tell she's like an endurance athlete. Cause she does like, yes. the, she left the Nordic party early cause she had to wake up in the morning to go to CrossFit somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like you can tell like literally the song being called power. Like she yes, has, she's got the power, power in mm -hmm. her vocals. That's a great, yeah. That's a great one, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we'll do the other side. So the best male vocalists of this year. Mm -hmm. Now, I kind of struggle with this mm -hmm. one because I think I have a realistic answer, but then I just don't like their song that much. So okay, I don't know if I was really paying attention to them that much. Um, I want to say Ramo. He was a really good vocalist. He's, yeah. He can sing. But... Uh, I also wanted to say Marco for Italy. Oh my God. I mean, yeah. I think that's my answer because that's, again, one of those ones where it's just, for me, it's kind of like a vocal showcase. Yes, it is. And you can also, there's something about a singer that can really like translate the emotion through their voice and like these little details of the mm. way that their, their voice might like you know just move and waver in in such a way that makes you feel the the love or the pain or the heartbreak or whatever emotion they're trying to bring mm -hmm. that you and and it's especially apparent in a song where you don't know the language yes that is what makes you mm. really feel the message and the emotion that they're trying to send so i feel like he he deserves that award from me honestly that is such a good pick yeah i agree with you like that would be ve a very deserving winner for mm -hmm. this award mm -hmm. um i kind of have like a two different ways that i think about this particular award mm -hmm. so the one way the one one that i really want to say is like 
Gustav from Belgium. Yeah. He's another person where his like his level of professionalism yes. is so good. He never had a bad night. Mm -hmm. He was just so good and so clear. It's not as yeah. much of a vocal showcase song as yeah. Dua Vite was. Yeah. But it was still always performed so flawlessly. Yeah. And you could tell that like his skill was there. Maybe we're only getting 75% of his skill, mm -hmm. but that's okay because I like I kind of tune off a little bit when it gets into like the vocal exercise yeah. route yeah. of showcasing your vocals um but the other one that i want to say so it's kind of like two ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. for best vocals so we have the very polished professional consistent gustav mm -hmm. but we have the very young and passionate mm -hmm. and passionate yes. theodore andre from romania yes because of his youth and I mean, he, because he's, I mean, I think Gustav has been singing as long as Theodore has mm. been alive and Theodore's level of, I mean, yes. raw talent yeah. is just so out of this world mm -hmm. that I think he would have to be probably my best male vocalist for the year. That's a good choice as well. Definitely he's in there for me mm -hmm. um, because uh, again, like I, I just, that's why, you know, one thing we agree on is how underrated Theodore was throughout that so whole entire season. It just was like, I mean, his level of skill and talent, like you said, for his age, like you forget how young he was yeah. because of just how, you know, just he seemed like he'd been doing this for fucking 40 years, yeah. you know? It's natural. He's a natural. Yeah. yeah. That's why, oh, when you see somebody like that, that's like yeah. raw talent. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't want to say it over and over again, but oh my god, it's like raw is. talent it wasted, not on his end. Yeah. But, you know. Y yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, so next award. This is going to be a very hard one to answer. Favorite Eurovision artist that you met? And that can be for any reason, really. If there's just like one person that your encounter really stood out, mm -hmm. or maybe you were out doing the pre party, so you met a lot of people. So yeah. it could really, you could interpret that any way you want. Yeah. So I want to say, overall, this year, everybody was so sweet, so kind that I met. Like, I didn't have a negative experience at all with any artist mm -hmm. <laughs> that right. I met. Right. With any artist that with I met. With any artist. Um, and so it's it is hard for me to pick because mm -hmm. I also like because I did the pre parties. Some of them I feel like I spent so much mm -hmm. time with them. You know, like I could say honorable mentions might be somebody like Mimi Cat. I didn't you know spend a lot of time, but like I mean when I did my interview with her, I was sitting out there and we were just chit chatting and stuff for you know a while before we started doing it. You know, she was great. Mm -hmm. uh, she was one of the girls. You know. And then even my, you know, my short little dinner with uh, one of the twins. Oh, that's right. He was <laughs> at that birthday party. Yes, and I was sat right next to him. And he was so sweet. And there were so many good people. Oh, my God. Oh, this is so I hard know, to pick. I know, it's so hard to okay, pick. Okay, I'm going to say my, my, my favorite person that I met was Riley. Because to <gasps> yes. me, first of all. Love Riley. I just, every time I got to speak with him, I felt like I was talking to my bestie. Mm -hmm. Like, I really feel like, Riley, like, you want to get married? <laughs> because I I would love to get out of this country. And, um, you know, I feel like we could spend a lifetime together. Wow. You know, but also, he was so kind. He was he, super nice. He was the first person I met in Liverpool. Yes. And he was. He was. Yeah. It was. It was, like, so casual and yeah. down to earth. Yeah. And, he was and great. I think what made me makes me feel that like even more of like a love for him is just knowing like how mistreated he was by the fandom mm -hmm. and like actually being able to spend like multiple instances with him and he was just like the sweetest nicest person you could ever imagine and he was so generous in inviting me to the nordic party mm -hmm. And, and then and, invited me. You know, and I was like, oh, we got to get my girl Renata her first day here. Literally, I had been there <laughs> for like right into five it. hours and I ended up at the Nordic party. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah, and I didn't even know that was going on. And he just DM'd me on TikTok and was like, hey, you want to come? <laughs> and I was like, uh, bitch, yes. Yeah. So like all those things, like those are things you didn't need to do for me. But mm -hmm. like he was just, I, I, I really feel like bestie vibes with him. Um, yeah, So I what about that. you? So... 
I want to actually say Theodore Andre yeah. for this one yeah. because I I had done like one of my first reactions ever on YouTube was for the like like the earliest iteration like mm -hmm. video for his song like the pre yeah. pre selection like the early rounds of Romanian mm -hmm. selection and I just felt like there was something there and I by the time he got to Eurovision I think I did like four different yeah. reactions to his songs I just couldn't help myself like yeah. I just love to see the development of him mm -hmm. as an artist and mm -hmm. so through that like he had ended up seeing my videos and so he knew me he knew yeah. me we had talked on, on instagram and stuff he had watched my videos because i put them out and um i was so excited to finally meet like this person who i kind of like yeah. was you know like interacting with and what made it so special it was at the turquoise carpet mm. and there had been someone in front of me i think maybe it was sudden lights yeah and they had just walked away from me and right behind them pops up theodore andre mm. And I just go, oh my God, it's Theodore. And then Theodore goes, oh my God, it's Renata. I know that gagged me. I was like, oh, I, oh. my heart, like, I like feel like fluttering in my heart yeah. thinking about it. Like it was such a like, just like weird. Yeah. I was like, like he, he was like so excited to yeah. see me. Like it's like yeah. the other, it should be the other way around. It was so pure. It was, it was. And it was just like, it was kind of one of those things. It was like seeing like a long lost friend. Yeah. Like, oh my God, it's my cousin Theodore. Ah, yeah. It's you. Like it was just such a cool, mm -hmm. cool moment. Yeah. With him. But the other one I'll say, meeting Lorraine. <gasps> yes. Was, she is like, it's like I don't know if you've ever been to like a Hindu ashram where you've mm. been around a guru, but meeting her, yeah. I felt like I was feeling the feelings that I've witnessed people feel when they meet their literal religious yes. guru at yeah. an ashram. It felt like a religious experience mm -hmm. meeting her and like holding her hand. It was one of those things where it was like yeah. I. She held really her knows hand. how to like. Yeah, bring she you does in. this. She's like it looks makes you eyes. feel like you are the most important. person person in, in the, the world. world yeah in the world yeah. it's it was, crazy it was insane like i i can't even think of another time that i really felt like mm. that and it what because it felt like a re it was probably a minute yeah. long like this connection it felt like, a lifetime. it felt like yeah it was it was really special she yeah. is a very um cosmic woman yeah that's such a good way to describe it it's so true yeah like uh that's why just the whole time you're like you felt that energy from her and in, in, in every moment even the moments like where she was like rushed past and i didn't get to speak to her but she still somehow has a way to still make everyone in the room feel like right. like included. she she does a lot of points yes, she'll like she point. does she did that to me in madrid yeah. she was like because i was holding up a, i literally had the picture of me oh my in God. her outfit and i was like please come back oh my god she was like <laughs> yeah she did like she, she like she like acknowledges you which yes. is amazing because she doesn't have to yeah i'm not going to drop the name but there was a specific artist on that turquoise carpet who almost made a point to not look at anybody well let me tell you there was nobody like the one in italy but um well no. <laughs> every year has one every year has a diva uh, yeah let's yeah. say yeah let's say that Oh, and I just want to give a shout out also. Okay, there's like, I just need a rapid fire. Luke Black, oh. again, bestie vibes. Like, uh, and I, I, I told him this on the red carpet, uh, or the, I think it was purple carpet. It was in Madrid. And he like walked up and we were just chit-chatting casually. I already interviewed him. So we were just chilling. And I was like, you know, I was in my Clark Kent moment with you because I was sitting right next to you in Constructa. Oh my God, in, that's insane. In the hotel lobby eating our breakfast. And I'm sitting there. Not in drag. And, no, not in drag. So he has no idea it's me. And I'm just sitting there like, oh my God, I'm like low, low key, like eating breakfast with Luke Black and Constructa. Um, they don't know it. And, and, and just like, I don't know, every single time I met him again, it was like similar to Riley. It was just like, I felt a good energy with him. Like I could be his best friend. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I I didn't really get to meet Luke Black at all because it was the turquoise carpet and he was very uncomfortable in that yeah, environment and yeah. he quickly, you know, went up. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. It was it was clear that he was at least acknowledging other people. Yes. Yes. You he know? was doing 
his best. He he did his know? best and moved along. Yeah. And and he did what he needed to do. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, he was. He did seem like he seems like another one, like a real one. Yeah. He's a real one. There's no pretense around. Exactly. Luke Black. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. love him. Oh. He's great. I, I want these people every single year. It's so unfair that we don't live in Europe and we can't I go know. to the concerts like yeah. everybody else. I know. I want to run into him on the beach. Yeah. Get attacked by seagulls together. Yeah. Okay. So the next award is going to be your best non-qualifier. Mm. Who didn't make it to the final? Oh, okay. I feel like I had an answer for this, but now I'm like wavering because I feel like I don't remember every single person that didn't qualify. I feel like the one that shocked me the most, and this is not because of my previous answer, I I was low-key shocked with Riley not qualifying. Yeah. Because I just felt like they did the live performance exactly what it needed to be done. Like, uh, that was exactly what I envisioned, and they completely revamped it, which I appreciated. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I thought he did pretty well. I just, I kind of was shocked because there was just other ones that I thought wouldn't make it through compared to him. Um, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. I think it's really popping off. It's okay. Over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so for me, my best non-qualifier is going to be Malta. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know, that was one that I just thought was... It really? was, I thought that, I thought that one was good enough to make the final. Mm. And I was really surprised that it was so low. It came last. Yeah, yeah. And so that was one of those things where I was like, that was like very, very robbed to me. Yeah, that's um, fair. Peaked Jacks obviously was also very robbed to me as well because that was a, a band. It's a band that I really like. It wasn't their strongest song yeah. of their collection, which is unfortunate. It's not the first time that's happened in Eurovision. Yeah. I mean, Alexander Ribak went with a song that's not his oh, best. Oh, well, Lord Jesus. So... I mean, it, I mean, it happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I thought Malta was just really good. Mm -hmm. And I thought the staging was really good. And just people weren't into it. And I was just really, I, I was really I shocked by that. It. I was in the boat of like the whole time thinking they're not qualifying. Yeah, um, I was holding out hope for that one. And I was genuinely bummed that it didn't make it because yeah. I did like it. That was a, that's the thing too about Eurovision is I really listen to the songs. Mm -hmm. So like if there's a song that I really like, I really happen to like that song. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, you know, they were sad so for sweet me. as well. They were oh nice. My God, they I were mean, great. they were amazing, but Yeah. You know. But they didn't make it. And not everyone could make it to the final. That's no, just no. the way that it is. No, it should be. No. Yeah. So what is your biggest grower? Mmm. I want to hear yours first because I, I still got to think on mine a little. God, you know, this one is so hard. Um, oh, I know. You <laughs> okay. I was a hater. A hater. Well, I don't know if I was a hater. But uh, people were mad about my Armenian reaction. Armenia. Oh, well, I'm not surprised. And, and I got to say, that's, still, like, that's one of the few that's still on my playlist that I'm listening to. I still really like Future Lover. Um, and it grew on me because I think the thing was, was the fact that those lyrics, those off-putting lyrics, mm -hmm. you get used to them. And yeah. then it's like, okay, you know, now I can, I can get down with your smoothies. I'd love a smoothie. You know, I get, you know what? I get what that girl was talking about. I love a smoothie, you know? Yeah. And so, and so, <laughs> so no, I just, I feel like it, you know, I got used to it and, and, and then I started to really appreciate all the great things about it. Mm. You know, so. Okay. She's really teetering. <laughs> it's like literally it's so amazing. It's really fucking hot in here. And this <laughs> wig, I got the extra strength uh, ghost bond glue. Oh my Girl, God. Girl, that shit melted off. And and because your wig is so tall, it's actually getting cut off. So you all can't even see. I'm literally like looking. It's so big. It's like a cake on top of her head. Yes. It's like, I just keep staring at it because it's literally so magnificent. Yeah, I think the balance wasn't great. I think it needed to be a little forward a little so forward. it sat <laughs> on the top of my head, but it's okay. We'll get through it. So who was your biggest grower? So my biggest grower, um, is going to actually be What They Say by Victor oh. Vanderkost. Yeah. Interesting. So I 
didn't really have a response to this song mm -hmm. the first time I listened to it. Um, I recorded a reaction. I never posted it because I was just like sitting there like, okay. You probably couldn't have posted it anyways because of Panic Records, but... Oh, but you know what? Be. Also because of Panic <laughs> Records. Thank you very much. You um, know. There's that reason too. Yeah. Little tiny copyright reason. Um, but yeah, so that one just, you know, it wasn't a song that I listened to. I kind of forgot mm -hmm. that it even existed at all. And then I started hearing it more. It was definitely mm -hmm. one of those things where it's like the exposure of the song made me like it a lot more. Yeah. So like I, you know, I would listen to it. Um, like it would just come, you know, like your playlist ends and then Spotify's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, obviously you listen oh, to this song. Oh, you love Eurovision, so, so, you know. So here yeah. I'm going to force feed you this song. Um, and I just started to find that I wasn't skipping it. Yeah. You know, it would come on and I'd, you know, na, 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 na. I didn't know what the hell he was saying. No clue. I, I could, I really, the, the, I think it's like something about lost souls. Oh, I thought he was saying the, lasso. La, it sounds like lassos. Uh, someone said it sounds like assholes. Uh, like I just could, he was singing in cursive. I couldn't tell what the lyrics were. Um, but I found that I, you know, I didn't, I didn't mind it. That yeah. I kind of liked it. And then um, he played live at the Euro club. Oh, yeah. And it, he was another one where he was just so young and you could just see that, like, the the mm. happiness that he yeah. had performing. Mm -hmm. And he was a good singer. And He was a great singer. Great I, he singer. had one of my favorite voices. Like, I don't know about vocal skill. I mean, he, has a, he had a great he had vocal a great skill. He had a great voice. He was a great singer. But I loved his voice. Like, he just did so unique. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a sucker for really deep voices. And he's, like, so young, too. So there was, like, a contrast mm -hmm. there with him being, like, this very young person with this very strong voice. Yeah. So I think, honestly, that was probably my biggest mm -hmm. grower for the year. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really love its live performance. Uh, no, the staging was a mess, and it was it just didn't yeah. it didn't work. Yeah. It, sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. I, was, I, I loved Grease for a while, but then it kind of fell off for me because of that. Yeah. But. I mean, there was a problem this year with young talent not receiving yes. adequate support from their delegations yeah. to have strong performances on stage. Yeah. Kim, Iru, Theodore. Oh, yes. Don't get me so... Mm. So, I mean, it was he was he was a victim of uh, the circumstances there, I think, a little bit as well. It, yeah. it could have uh, come out a lot better for him, but I thought he's a really great talent. And actually, I thought the song was was really good i yeah. like i could see that on the radio a hundred percent a hundred percent hundred percent um it was it was definitely my biggest grower yeah oh nice so for our final award mm -hmm. who's your winner of 2023 mm. well my winner i i know it's not yours but my winner was cha-cha-cha What's cha cha cha? <laughs> I know that's not really your. I don't um, think I've ever heard that song tea. before. Yeah. No, is that the one that was kind of like kind of weird, like rock techno yeah, rap? Yeah, there was one? like yeah, some that... some like you know. Pal. Oh, the guy with the bowl cut. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He stole that... it from Monica Lou. Uh, yeah, yeah, that one. No, <laughs> fuck yeah. Oh my god, obviously yes. cha 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 was just yeah. from the moment I fucking heard that song, mm. it was like. I, I knew I I was like okay that's it like I'm not gonna hear another song that I like as yes. much as this one yeah I feel like in your brain like that's like the soundtrack of your life no it's literally what the inside of my head sounds like yeah and and for me it's one of those ones that just like grew the more and more I saw it mm -hmm. it was like okay I loved it when I first heard it the studio track I loved it when I saw it at UMK I loved it when I listened to it live mm -hmm. the energy of the crowd and feeling that and then they amplified it for the Eurovision stage it just got better and better, better. and better and better and better every single time you heard it yeah so I mean it's I mean it's, it's for me it's the it's the obvious clear winner for this year and even yeah. like seeing him live like he's not like a vocal artist no. like he's yeah. a rapper yeah. okay and so it wasn't about that and so like when you see him live it's not necessarily that you're seeing some kind of virtuoso singer yeah. but you're seeing a really incredible passionate performer mm -hmm. who just like gives everything when yeah. he's performing and it was just like he was honestly everything about he's just an icon he he is like mm -hmm. the virka serduchka of this year like he is just yes. he is he, so it will iconic. live on for the rest of time it's like, one of the most truly. iconic eurovision songs ever mm -hmm. and personally dancing lost to is one of my favorite yeah. eurovision songs yeah. ever so it really is like he he is 
Euro he is He's, Eurovision. Yeah, that's he, the energy of Eurovision. That's why I watch mm -hmm. Eurovision to be able to like have yeah. songs like that and artists like that in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that Eurovision was able to like, I don't know, allows us to find these artists mm -hmm. to, you know, feel their art and, and really just also the opportunities that we got to meet them and yeah. and and get to just experience them on another level it just took it to a whole other place and i don't know and also at the same time you know meeting you and meeting new friends yeah. and everything like that that's the energy of eurovision i think that's what i got from his song is when that song played it was like everybody came together yes and it, it was just everybody was happy everybody was jumping everybody mm -hmm. was moving that's the spirit of eurovision for me and uh, oh my god, that is so true, Maxie. You know? That is so... It really is the spirit of Eurovision. Yeah. So that is the end of our awards and yes. the end of this episode ah. as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm like so out of this world excited for what we have to come with this podcast oh my god guys before the season starts first of all i'm okay what's yet to come right right we yeah, got what's to come i'm i'm hyped to force renata into the junior eurovision world yes like i am indoctrinating you into that because y'all know i'm a junior eurovision stand to the day i die okay and I'm hyped for that. I'm hyped for national selection season. I can't wait for national selection. Ooh, because our opinions are going to differ. We're going to... Claws are going to come out. Yes. A hundred percent. And I'm just excited for everything that there is to come with us together. Yes. Like, oh, I'm so excited to, to have a partner in crime. Yes. You know? And, you know, this is what happens when two queens get together to maximize their joint slay. Hello. This is what happens. Maximum slayage. Maximum slayage. Never not slaying. So it's going to be so good. We really can't wait for the rest of the content and we can't wait to talk to you guys. <gasps> Alrighty guys. So don't forget if, if you loved us, if you hated us and you want to hate watch us, don't forget to go over to our Patreon mm -hmm. and subscribe where you will get early access and full length videos of the podcast every single week you'll be getting them on thursday mm -hmm. and also don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel maxi rainbow where you'll be able to be getting the episodes on friday as well as don't forget to subscribe to the esports channel esport pod Hello. on everything yes and uh, uh, yeah uh, if you love us <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Oh my God, hello. Share. And listen yeah. to this podcast wherever podcasts are found mm -hmm. on Spotify, iTunes, all the places where podcasts mm -hmm. are, we should be there. We should be there. So, yeah, my name is Maxi Rainbow. And I'm Renata from the eSpot. And until next time, see you guys later. Bye. Goodbye. Mwah. Cute. Ah, Woo, we did it. Yay. Whoa. Okay, okay, turn on that air conditioner. Oh my god.